are at volume 15. That's 150 cases that we've covered so far, and that's just the beginning. As we move into the summer season, we can only imagine what may lie ahead of us on that long and dusty road of uncertainty. There's no doubt that many hikers, campers, and outdoor enthusiasts will vanish in the coming warmer months as they have in years past. Join me as I count down 10 more of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. Number 10 In May of this year, an unidentified man arrived at the Great Sand Dunes National Park in Colorado, but never left. He entered the park on May 8th, parked his car at the Sand Pit Picnic Area, then set off into oblivion. It was nearly a week before park officials noticed something was wrong. It was unknown where he intended to go exactly, but park staff believe he may have been heading to either Cold or Sand Creeks, and ultimately Mount Harold, a 13,000 foot peak within the park. So when the search began on May 14th, they focused their efforts in a 15 square mile area, utilizing dog teams, two dozen ground units, and helicopter assistance. At some point, severe weather moved into the area, delaying search efforts for several days. By May 20th, the search was scaled back, but there is still an ongoing investigation into his disappearance. This was the same park where a six-year-old boy was swallowed up by the sand dunes of Mount Baldy in 2014, not to be confused with another six-year-old who disappeared but was eventually found a short time later in 2015. Number 9 In October of 1994, a 34-year-old hiker named Shannon Shell vanished during her hike in the Pincon Mountains of Pima County, Arizona. She had planned to hike the Tanque Verde Ridge Trail to Manning Camp in the eastern portion of the Sanguero National Monument. This was a 32-mile round trip over rough terrain, which she had previously attempted but failed several times so she wanted to try again. On the day of her disappearance, she parked her car at the trailhead, locked her purse, money, and jewelry inside, and began the hike. She was carrying food, water, and extra clothing. A short time later, searchers found a campfire ring approximately six miles up the trail with footprints and various belongings they thought may have been hers, but they never found any other trace of her. The search involved two dozen volunteers and park officials, and lasted several days before ending altogether. Friends and family stated that she was a very experienced hiker who knew the area well. To this day, she remains missing. Number 8 On October 10, 1988, a 28-year-old named Randy Spring was dropped off by a family member in the vicinity of Tipton Road in Whitewater, California. He was last seen carrying an army green backpack at the time of his disappearance and was well equipped for a three-day hiking and camping trip. Other hikers in the area reported seeing Randy at the base of the San Jacinto Mountains between noon and one o'clock that afternoon. Randy told family members he intended to hike the north side of the mountain, but an extensive search of the region turned up no results. His disappearance baffles many considering he was trained for the wilderness survival during his time in the U.S. Army. Number 7 
In August of 2004, a 51-year-old went camping with his nephew in the woods near Warren, Vermont, located on the Granville Town Line, when he disappeared. Danny Savoy set out to gather some firewood for the approaching night, but never returned to the campsite. The nephew then spent a few hours searching and waiting for his return, before notifying authorities. Several dozen search and rescue personnel searched the entire area for several days before ending the search altogether. But despite these efforts, no trace of him was ever found. He left all of his camping and hiking gear behind. His disappearance continues to baffle experts. Number 6 On March 10, 1991, a three-year-old boy vanished near a cabin where he and his father had been staying at, outside of Riverside, California. It was about 10.30 that morning when Travis Zweig had wandered into the bushes to relieve himself. The father was nearby working on chainsaws and noticed something was off after several minutes when Travis failed to return. The father then went in to look for him, but he was nowhere to be found. The cabin was located in a rural mountainous area. Rescue workers and helicopters with infrared technology searched the region, but located no evidence of his whereabouts. Within a couple days of the search, a large storm moved into the area, complicating search efforts. The search was called off after a week when authorities determined that the boy could not have survived the extreme weather conditions. To this day, he remains missing. Number 5 In July of 1988, a 24-year-old hiker named Timothy Barnes disappeared inside Yosemite National Park. He left Tenaya Lakes near Highway 120 east of Tioga Road at around 9 a.m. that morning. He had planned to hike from the Murphy Creek Trailhead to Poly Dome Lakes in Yosemite, which are located approximately three miles from the lakes. He was then supposed to arrive back by 4.30 p.m., but was never heard from again. Barnes's friends reported him as a missing person to park officials the following morning, and from there on, an extensive search surrounding the area was conducted, but failed to produce any results. He was declared legally dead two years later, but his body was never found. Number 4 On September 25, 1981, a 58-year-old woman named Thelma Melton was hiking on Deep Creek Trail in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park of Tennessee with two friends when she disappeared. She was last seen shortly after 4 p.m. that day when she suddenly sped up her pace and walked ahead of her companions. The two friends saw her walk over a hill on the trail and out of their view. The friends assumed that she had returned to the campground where the Airstream trailer owned by her and her husband was parked. When the friends arrived 30 minutes later, there was no trace of Thelma anywhere. By 6 p.m. that night, word had gotten out to the park officials of her disappearance, where a week-long search effort was coordinated but eventually ended without any trace of her. Family and friends stated that she was familiar with the area, and that there was no indication that she had ventured off the path. Number 3 On April 21, 2005, an 86-year-old man named Doug Pierce set out to volunteer at Woodland Elementary in Mariposa Middle Schools, but never arrived. 
So a search ensued, and authorities eventually located his Ford Ranger stuck in the mud on Chowchilla Mountain Road above Ponderosa Basin near Summit Camp in Mariposa County, California. Authorities stated it appeared the truck had accidentally caught fire and speculated that he became lost when he tried to walk out of the mountains after leaving his truck. To friends and family of Doug, they were surprised to hear of this because he knew that mountain like the back of his hand. Doug was a retired nuclear and chemical engineer and was in excellent health at the time of his disappearance. This case remains unsolved. Number 2 On September 9, 2009, a 61-year-old bow hunter named Melvin Nadell traveled to Elk Mountain in New Mexico to join his two friends at a camp they had already set up. After discussing their plans at 4.30 p.m. that day, Mel's two friends went into the backcountry to begin their hunt, while he stayed behind to build a blind near the camp. When the two friends returned three hours later, Mel was nowhere to be found. The hunters became concerned that he'd somehow wandered off and gotten lost, so they blasted their air horns and fired off several shots. After reasoning that enough time had passed, they called the authorities. The search kicked off the following day and quickly grew into one of the largest dragnets that Pecos, New Mexico had ever seen, including dog teams, airplanes, helicopters, ATVs, horsemen, and over a hundred volunteers. Despite these combined efforts, no trace of him was ever found. Mel was dressed for the wilderness, armed with both a bow, 44 revolver, and a hunting knife. At one point during the search, trackers followed a scent of footprints they believed belonged to him that led 100 to 150 feet away from the camp down a trail and then disappeared. About 10 years earlier, a 71-year-old named Emma Tresp vanished inside that area as well at a location some folks refer to as Devil's Road. No trace of her was ever found as well. Number 1 In July of 1995, a 37-year-old Massachusetts businesswoman named Jeannie Hesselswart was driving from Fresno to Yosemite National Park with her boyfriend when they pulled over to stretch their legs. Now here's where things get a little unclear. Depending on where you look, some reports state that the two went on separate short hikes, while other reports say that they each went to relieve themselves. The boyfriend returned to the car and waited for Jeannie, but she was nowhere to be seen. He then spent an hour searching the area, but came up with nothing. A massive ground and air search ensued, the largest in the park's history, involving hundreds of personnel. They conducted grid searches on foot, combing more than 40 square miles. They then brought in smoke jumpers and paratrooper firefighters. Search groups from all over the Central Valley arrived to join the effort. But despite all the professional search and rescue resources thrown into this, they still came up empty-handed. On September 3rd, nearly a month after her disappearance, two fishermen found her body three-quarters of a mile from the top of Bright of Falls, a free-falling stream that runs off a 650-foot cliff. This area is approximately four miles from the point where she became separated, and searchers were baffled how she ended up where she did. Some officials believed that she'd followed the sound of rustling leaves in the wind, believing it was the main road that she was parked on. This may have caused her to wander in the exact opposite direction, and by the time night fell, she had completely lost her sense of direction altogether. At first, authorities were unable to determine her cause of death, but then eventually ruled that she accidentally drowned. And there you have it.
have it. Ten more cases to add to the ever-growing list of mysterious national park disappearances. If you have a case you'd like to update us on, or even if you'd like to bring to our attention, feel free to leave us a comment, and we'll do our best to check it out. Thanks for watching, and subscribe for more videos. Summer is in full swing, and so are the strange disappearances. In June alone, there have been a shockingly large number of missing folks, some of which I'll be including in this video. Join me as I count down 10 more of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. On June 16th of this year, a 22-year-old named Andrew McCracken was reported missing after failing to check in with his family. He arrived at the Gridley Wilderness area on June 4th, just outside of Oroville, California. Though the family knew of his camping plans, Andrew hadn't mentioned where he intended to go exactly. They also noted how unusual it was for him not to check in on a regular basis. Currently, detectives have no leads in the investigation, and despite search and rescue efforts, no trace of him has ever been found. Number 9 In June of 1983, a four-year-old girl accompanied her family on a picnic outing in the Helena National Forest in the Elkhorn Mountains when she vanished. Nyleen Marshall was playing with some children who walked ahead of her for just a moment at approximately 4 p.m. that day. When they turned back to look for her, she was gone. An extensive search of the area turned up no indication of her whereabouts. The parents were then interviewed and eventually cleared of any suspicion. To this day, she remains missing. Number 8 On June 11, 1998, 38-year-old named Jonathan Audrey went for a day run in the Devil's Punch Bowl area of Angela's National Forest inside the San Gabriel Mountains, but never returned. Audrey was a deputy with the LA County Sheriff's Department at the time of his disappearance, and had been employed for over 15 years. He was a long-distance runner, skilled outdoorsman, and experienced hiker who knew the area well. An extensive search involving two helicopters, 30 volunteers, and at least two bloodhounds failed to find any trace of him. After a week, the search was called off, and to this day, he remains missing. Number 7 On June 13, 2017, a 72-year-old hiker was reported missing when he failed to arrive at Phantom Ranch in California, where he made reservations a few days earlier. Witnesses state that he was last seen on June 11 near Hermit Camp on Tonto Trail and may have been disoriented. Search and rescue operations included a hasty search of four ground teams, search dogs as well as aerial reconnaissance missions. 
They searched in and out of both trails, and for nearly a week they continued the search, but no trace of him was ever found. To this day, he remains missing. Number 6 On October 24, 1996, a 37-year-old named Michael Malinowski left a conference in Westchester, Pennsylvania and checked into the Pine Tree Motel in Gaines. After a couple of days, he arrived at Barber Rock Access Point on the west rim of Pennsylvania Grand Canyon before disappearing. His vehicle was discovered undisturbed by park officials with most of his personal possessions still inside. Authorities speculated that he had gone for a short day hike in the canyon's trails, but an extensive five-day search turned up no signs of him. Friends and family stated that he had been in the area on several occasions and knew those trails well. His case remains unsolved. Number 5 In June of this year, a 53-year-old woman vanished during her hike through Thunder Mountain in Alaska. State troopers discovered Terry Huesher's vehicle off Jennifer Drive in the Mendenhall Valley with an expired permit. So they pulled together a group of over 40 searchers, including park rangers, volunteers, search dogs, and even family members. After an intense three-day search, it was scaled back and eventually called off altogether by officials. Family stated that she was well prepared for the hike and had only intended to be out there for no more than a few hours. Although the official search ended, friends and family continued to keep on looking for her. Number 4 In June of 1978, a 14-year-old boy named Edward Nye vanished during a camping trip in the Sky Lakes region near the middle fork of the Rogue River in Prospect, Oregon. Edward Nye was with a church group that had planned a three-day camping trip beginning on June 20th and ending on the 23rd. It was on the second day that the boy told his brother that he was going fishing in a nearby creek just about a hundred yards or so downstream from the campsite. Edward failed to return later that afternoon and was never seen again. The search of the area failed to produce any results as to his whereabouts. To this day, and nearly 40 years on, there are no clues as to what happened to Edward. Number 3 On April 30th of 1980, a two-year-old girl named Megan Genovix disappeared while playing outside of her home in St. Ignatius, Montana. She was last seen in the early afternoon hours playing in the unfenced yard of her home, which is located in a very remote wooded area of the region. Her mother was nearby doing chores and turned her back for a moment. When she looked back, the girl was gone. A large search and rescue followed her disappearance and lasted for several days, but was unable to find any trace of her. Investigators ruled out any sign of foul play after questioning family members, neighbors, and others who may have been in the area during that time. Search dogs were also unable to produce any sign of her. Number 2 In September of 2008, a 43-year-old hunter named Bryce Rogers disappeared on top of the South Fork Mountain in Trinity County, California. He was last seen by his longtime hunting partner tracking a deer up a ridge around 5,200 feet in elevation. 
For the next hour, the friend called out and fired some shots into the air just in case Bryce was lost, but this proved to be ineffective. He then drove down the mountain where he could then radio for help. A three-day search of the area produced no results and Bryce was never heard from again. Number 1 On June 2nd of this year, a 23-year-old named Matthew Nisleet disappeared while hiking with a friend on top of a 640-foot peak called Feather Falls in Butte County, California. The two had begun to make their descent when Matthew vanished. Authorities believed he may have lost his footing on top of the falls and fell into the rocks below. So they organized a large search and rescue team consisting of over three dozen professional searchers, several volunteers, dog teams, and even helicopter assistants. For nearly a week, the search continued by foot, boat, and air. But despite these combined efforts, Matthew remains missing. Even as recent as mid-July, there are still people out there looking for him. His disappearance continues to baffle experts. Well there you have it. Just 10 more of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. The summer's only halfway through, and there's a whole lot that can happen between now and the end of it. Be careful out there folks. Travel in numbers and use extremely good communication as it just might save your life. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos. Statistically speaking, you are more than likely to disappear inside a state or national park if you're out hiking, camping, or hunting by your lonesome. And that's a common denominator that many of these cases share. However, every so often you'll hear about a case where two or more people vanish at the same time, many of who are never heard from again. Now, I've noticed an increasing number of these types of cases. That just goes to show you that you can never be too careful out there. Join me as I count down 10 more of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. Number 10 On April 20th of 1990, a 17-year-old named Christopher Temple vanished during the Earth Day celebration at the Rose Lake Riverfront Recreation Area in Michigan. Christopher was camping with four friends at a campground within the area and was spotted leaving to camp into the surrounding woods around 9 p.m., but never returned. An extensive search of the area turned up no indication of his whereabouts. A year and a half later, hikers spotted one of his sneakers 300 yards southwest of the campground. There was no indication of foul play nor did the authorities suspect he was a runaway. In fact, Christopher was looking forward to finishing his senior year in high school and had made tentative plans to further his education at college thereafter. Number 9 On October 14, 2016, Sean Higgins and his son Trevor went hunting in the Shasta Coast to drainage in the Bear River Camp area about 45 miles east of Gold Beach, Oregon. At some point the two became separated while tracking a deer. 
After a few days without any contact, the family became concerned and notified authorities. An extensive ground search was initiated and Trevor was found on the fourth day. He provided searchers with some information regarding the area where the two became separated. But despite this, Sean was never located and all efforts were suspended. Number 8 In November of 1928, Glenn and Bessie Hyde went for a honeymoon trip down the Green and Colorado Rivers, disappearing with inside the Grand Canyon National Park. Search parties scoured the region, but was unable to locate the two. However, they eventually located their boat still intact with all their possessions still inside, including Bessie's diary and camera, both of which contain no clue as to what may have happened to the two. They had planned to run the rapids of the Colorado, and had they succeeded, Bessie would have been the first woman to do so. Searchers speculated that they may have made it as far as River Mile Marker 226 near Diamond Creek and had set up camp. Some believe the couple went for a swim and got swept down the river. However, friends and family state that the two were avid outdoorsmen who always took extra precautions in outdoor safety. Number 7 On July 28th of this year, a couple vanished inside the Joshua Tree National Park. Rachel Nguyen and Joseph Orbeso, both in their 20s, failed to check out of the park at their scheduled time of 11 a.m. All their personal belongings were left behind. A search was launched that included San Bernardino County Sheriff's deputies, CHP officers, and canine units. However, temperatures soared in the area well past 100 degrees, making search efforts difficult to continue, which ended after a week. Sixteen personnel and fourteen dogs had participated in the search when it ended. The couple's vehicle was eventually found in the northwest area of the park near Mays Loop. Orbeso's cell phone pinged from a location inside the park around 4 p.m. on July 27th, a day before the two were reported missing. Although the search has officially ended, there are still a handful of volunteers actively searching. Number 6 In February of 2010, an avid surfer and experienced camper named Laura Vogel vanished inside the Palawela area of Maui County in Hawaii. Family and friends became concerned when the woman failed to show up for a tutoring session the following day. Friends who knew the area well decided to help join the search and rescue effort and eventually located her van near a homeless encampment with the keys in the ignition and the driver's side door still open. After two weeks of searching, authorities found parts of her cell phone scattered along the cliffs at the birthing pools. To this day, no other trace of her has been found. Number 5 On April 16th of 2015, a 53-year-old man vanished inside the Buena Vista Valley of Nevada while out on a solo camping trip. Jeffrey Kirkwood was last seen by a deputy at the campground who stated that he was in good spirits. It was unclear exactly how long Jeffrey intended to stay at the campsite, but his wife stated he didn't plan to be there for more than a week. Jeffrey had some medical issues and wasn't exactly in the best position to venture off very far from the campsite, even if he wanted to, according to those who knew him. Ranchers in the area reported a possible sighting of him a couple days prior to his disappearance, but no other information has come forward. On the day he was reported missing, the weather changed for the worse, delaying search efforts. 
To this day, he remains missing. Number 4 In May of 2006, a 59-year-old camper vanished at Morgan Campground near Weber River in Utah. On the night of May 30th, James and his friends were socializing around the campfire until approximately 1 a.m. The friends decided to call it a night, but James wanted to stay up just a little bit longer. About two hours later, the friends were awoken by the sound of James's dog barking outside their tents. When they went out to investigate, they noticed that James was gone. For the next hour or so, the friends called out and searched for him. Soon thereafter, nearly 30 searchers combed the area, including the banks of a nearby river. Search dogs and dive teams were also dispatched, but there was no trace of them. The friends told authorities that James and his dog were inseparable, and that it was strange that the dog ended up by his lonesome. Shortly after his disappearance, the temperatures in the area dropped to below freezing and the rain began to fall. For the next week, the bad weather continued, but the search persisted. Unfortunately, James was never located and he remains missing to this day. Number 3 On the morning of August 23, 2008, Michael Huron called his two sons to let them know he was going to do some work for the day at his farm in Happy Valley, Tennessee, near the Great Smoky Mountains. But he failed to return that night. It wasn't uncommon for Michael to stay longer than he had planned, so the sons weren't exactly worried until the following day when he still hadn't returned. So the two sons got together with a few family friends and went to Michael's farm and noticed his truck was parked at the end of the driveway with the windows rolled down. Michael had planned to mow the grass, but it hadn't been mowed. After knocking on the door of his home with no answer, they went in and searched but found no clue as to his whereabouts. They then decided to search the rest of the property. At the edge of Michael's property, they found his abandoned ATV with the ignition switch still on. It was parked in high gear on a steep hill in a location Michael normally didn't go. At this time the family notified police and a five day search ensued. The search included several dozen searchers including family friends, volunteers and professionals. But despite these combined efforts, no trace of them was ever found. Number 2 On July 12th, also of 2008, a 73-year-old man vanished in the remote area of Taquamanon Falls State Park in Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Joseph Cluley was last known to be in a summer cabin and had planned to check in with his wife the following day at 9 a.m but he never did. Even though Joseph enjoyed short day hikes, he had medical issues that would prohibit him from wandering too far from his cabin. After his wife notified police, they arrived at the cabin to find it locked and Joseph gone. The rest of the area was searched and there was no indications of foul play. His dog, a Chow Springer Spaniel mix, disappeared with him. Two days later, the dog arrived back at the cabin, appearing thin and dehydrated. Those who knew Joseph state that he knew the area well and carried a firearm. His disappearance continues to baffle experts. Number 1 On October 20th, 2006, a 32-year-old man named Jonathan Betts 
was last seen in a green 2000 Mazda protege when he entered the Saguaro National Park in Arizona at approximately 4 p.m. The next day, his vehicle was found with an expired permit and at the head of the Loma Verde Loop Trail, which is one mile from the main road. An extensive search of the park failed to turn up any trace of Jonathan, and after four days, the search was ended altogether. Three years later, in 2009, a hiker discovered one of his shoes several miles away on top of a boulder. Authorities were baffled as to how it got there. Those who knew him state that he was in great mental and physical shape and had no intentions of staying at the park for very long or disappearing off the radar altogether. To this day, no other trace of him has been found. And there you have it. Ten more of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. If there's a case you'd like to bring to my attention, feel free to do so in the comments section below, or contact me on my YouTube channel. Be safe out there, folks. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos. As many of you already know, there are too many strange missing person cases that tend to go under the radar, and while we usually only hear about the more recent cases or a chosen few, the truth is, the majority of them never really see the light of day. In this video, I'm going to list 10 more of the lesser known cases that fall under this category. Join me as I count down. 10 more of the strange estate and national park missing person cases out there. Number 10 On November 16th, 2005, a 48-year-old named Roy Stevens was reported missing in the vicinity of Highway 58 in Crescent, Oregon. His gray 1991 Ford Taurus was located on November 25th of Thanksgiving Day, with all of his personal belongings still inside. It was found abandoned on the Waldo Lake Access Road area of Highway 58 and approximately 4 miles up the mountain. Search and rescue gathered in the area and conducted an intense three-day search, but no trace of him was found. Friends and family state that he was on his way home from work when he entered the access road for reasons unknown. They also added that Roy was a devoted husband and family man who would not have left without telling anyone where he was heading. Number 9 On May 31st of 1999, a 28-year-old man named Todd Lucchesi vanished outside of Downeyville, California. He was reported missing on June 3rd after his brothers went to the family's summer cabin where he had been staying at and realized he was gone. Dogs eventually tracked a scent from the cabin to within 5 feet of the edge of the North Fork of the Uber River. Dive teams were dispatched and searched up and down the river for miles, but there was no clue as to his whereabouts. Four years later, in August of 2003, hikers stumbled across a hiking boot dangling from a tree that authorities say belonged to him about eight miles northwest of where he disappeared. To this day, Todd remains missing. Number 8 
On August 8, 2005, a 64-year-old woman disappeared somewhere between Donnell Vista and the Sierra Nevada Mountains in California. Nita Mayo had planned a one-day shopping trip over the Sierra Nevadas to the western side of the mountain range. She indicated that she would go over Sonora Pass on State Route 108 and would return by evening and report to work the following day. However, she failed to do either. Two days after she went missing, her vehicle was found near Donnell Vista, a lookout point on State Route 108 just outside of Sonora. The keys were locked inside, which could still be opened with a keypad. Her cell phone and purse were also inside. Despite extensive search efforts, which lasted nearly a week, no other trace of her was found. Nita's daughter stated that her mother was afraid of heights and that it was uncharacteristic of her to end up where she did at the lookout points, which overlooks the River Canyon 1,000 feet below. Her case remains unsolved. Number 7 On August 1, 2003, a 46-year-old German hiker disappeared inside a remote area of Yosemite National Park. Fred Clausen was last seen as he set off into the Hoover Wilderness behind the Twin Lakes area of the park just west of Bridgeport on a solo backpacking trip. He was reported missing shortly after when failing to check in with loved ones several days later. He was an experienced backcountry traveler and knew the area well. Despite a five-day search effort, he remained missing. This was one of the largest search efforts ever recorded in the park's history. Seven years later, in September of 2010, an off-duty Forest Service ranger discovered human remains near Worrell Mountain at the northeastern end of the park, along with hiking supplies and clothing that was thought to have belonged to Fred. Unfortunately, to this day, there is still no confirmation that the bones belong to him even after DNA analysis. The investigation is still classified as being active. Number 6 On February 23, 1997, a two-year-old boy named Reuben Felix vanished in a remote area of Idaho while at his family's ranch. Reuben's stepfather was caring for him at the ranch along the Littlewood River in the rural Shoshone area in the late afternoon of that day. Reuben was sitting in their front yard and drinking his bottle when the stepfather went inside the house to grab something. When he returned a moment later, the boy was gone. A large search and suit, including more than 50 volunteers, professional search and rescue outfits, and as well as dog teams. Shortly after Reuben's disappearance, search dogs traced a scent for 200 yards to the edge of the Little Wood River, where they found a single child's footprint. The searchers intensified their efforts in the specific area, including the waterways, but no trace of them was found. The stepfather was interviewed and passed a polygraph test, clearing him of any suspicion. Even after 20 years, no further information has come forward about this case. Number 5 On February 16, 2007, a 22-year-old man named Jeremy Thomas disappeared while fishing at Tobes of Key Creek in Macon, Georgia. He went on a fishing trip with a friend who later went home without him. The friend stated that he grew cold and tired and went home, leaving Thomas behind at the creek. Thomas had planned to return the following day, but was reported missing when he failed to return home. Searchers discovered his boat abandoned, with all of his personal belongings still inside. His fishing pole was found resting against the side of the boat, with the lure still in the water. Thomas left behind a young son and pregnant fiancé. 
There was no evidence to suggest a crime was committed, and it was unlike him to leave without warning. Number 4 On August 20th, 2004, a 12 year old boy disappeared in the early morning hours at Kuberent Lake in the Uinta Mountains of Summit County, Utah. He was fishing with his father while out on a wilderness trip with Garrett's Boy Scout troop. The boys' socks had gotten wet, so he left to go back to their campsite about 150 yards away to change, but never arrived. An extensive search ensued and turned up few clues as to his whereabouts. One of his socks was found in a field of boulders half a mile from where he was last seen. Right after his disappearance, the temperature in the area dropped near freezing, and the winds picked up to over 30 miles per hour delaying further search efforts for several days. Garrett had passed wilderness training courses offered by the Park Council, so many who knew him were shocked that he could have become lost in a short distance from where he was fishing to the campsite. To this day, he remains missing. Number 3 On August 18, 2000, a 70-year-old woman disappeared inside the Marvel Mountains wilderness during a weekend retreat. She attended the retreat hosted by the Earth Circle Association in Quartz Valley, California. She and several other guests camped in the Marvel Mountains wilderness 20 miles from Etna. At approximately 9 a.m. on August 18, Rosemary stayed behind in the camp while her companions went on for a hike. At some point, she decided to go on a short hike but never returned to camp. She was last seen by other hikers at the south end of the Spirit Lake area. A large search ensued and other than a cluster of her hair found on some brush at the southern end of the lake, no other trace of her was ever found. Number 2 On September 19, 2008, a 62-year-old retired Marine named Ronald Gray disappeared during his hunting trip in the Nez Perce National Forest. He had planned an extended elk hunting trip and was supposed to meet his companions at a designated spot within the area, but never arrived. His friends waited a day before reporting him missing. It was confirmed by park employees that he had in fact entered the area but never left. His truck was eventually found with an expired permit and most of his belongings still inside. At the time of Ronald's disappearance, friends and family state that he was in good health and knew the area well considering he had hunted there on numerous occasions. An extensive search of the area turned up no sign of him. His case remains unsolved. Number 1 On March 17, 2004, a 30-year-old named Christopher Alexis went missing during a snowshoeing trip near Paradise, Michigan. He had stopped at a gas station to gather snacks for the trip, told the clerk he was going to go camping, and then set off into oblivion. Family reported him missing when he failed to check in at the agreed time, and a large search of the area was conducted. The search involved more than 100 professional search and rescue personnel, dog teams, volunteers, and even aerial assistants. At one point during the search, his snowshoes were found leading for miles into a thick, tangled network of swamps, but seemed to end abruptly beyond this area. Christopher was an avid hiker and outdoorsman who frequently traveled alone and off trail in the northern woods of Michigan. He was very well equipped and knowledgeable in wilderness survival. To this day, he remains missing.
And there you have it. Just 10 more of the strangest missing person cases out there. If there's a case you'd like to bring to my attention or even update us on, feel free to do so in the comments section below or send me a message on my YouTube channel. Thanks to all those who continue to support us and for helping to shed some light on some of these cases. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more videos. We've seen our fair share of missing person cases over the last few months, and just because the summer season is practically over, that won't stop the numbers from declining. The only thing we can do is to spread the awareness for the problem and hope that we can encourage folks to take extreme caution when venturing outdoors. Join me as I count down 10 more of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. Number 10 On August 14th of 2000, a 49-year-old woman named Ruth Ann Rupert disappeared in the Curry Village area of Yosemite National Park. Around noon that day, Ruth Ann was scheduled to go on a backpacking trip in the park but had to postpone it due to an infection. She is believed to have gone on a day hike from Yosemite Falls to the Forest area based on witness observation. Rupert's backpack was eventually found eight years later in 2008 and in the Fireplace Creek drainage area, consistent with the hiking route from Yosemite Falls to Forresta. But despite an intense search by park rangers and volunteers for two weeks after her disappearance, no other trace of her was found. Number 9 On April 8th of 1991, a 47-year-old named Dan Campbell was reported missing inside Yellowstone National Park after failing to report back to family members. Dan and his Australian Shepherd dog were dropped off at Hell Roaring Creek Trailhead on April 6th and had planned to hike to Jardina, Montana where he would then be picked up by a friend, but he never arrived. Dan was reported missing on April 8th, and despite an extensive week-long search, no trace of him or his dog were ever found. Number 8 On March 31st of 1993, a 23-year-old man named Jeffrey Zlotowski vanished during a hike in the Wailua Valley region on the island of Molokai. He flagged down a helicopter from the Department of Land and Natural Resources that day due to difficulties with his feet during a 14-mile hike that he was on. He was on his way back and had about six miles left to go when he flagged for the help. Jeffrey asked the helicopter pilot if he could get a ride but was refused because it was not a life-threatening situation according to the pilot. The pilot then stated he could charter a plane for $650 but Jeffrey could not afford it. However, the ranger did bring back the man's 60-pound backpack and it remained at the DLNR's headquarters for 40 days before he was reported missing. Jeffrey had traveled to Hawaii to explore, hike, and determine what he wanted to do with his life. At the time of his disappearance, he was a student at Wayne State University in Michigan. Number 7 On August 7th of this year, 
A 34-year-old man named Nicholas Larson was reported missing inside the Wrangell Elias National Park and Preserve in Alaska. Nicholas was last seen at McCarthy Lodge by other campers. He told his family and park employees that he had planned on a solo backpacking trip into the backcountry of the park on August 2nd and had planned to return by the 7th. When he failed to return, he was reported missing that same day. Despite a large search effort consisting of over several dozen searchers, no trace of him was found. Number 6 On August 14, 2013, a 25-year-old man named Thomas Cook vanished in the rural regions of Pueblo, Colorado. Thomas and his father had gotten into an argument, and Thomas left the house to clear his mind. It was thought that he was headed back to Wichita, Kansas to be with his family and friends. His only way to get there would have been to hitchhike, but he never arrived in the Wichita area or returned back to his father's home in Colorado. Thomas had failed to contact anyone he knew or even logged into any of his social networks. Those who knew him stated that it was completely out of character to disappear without any contact and even the medications he was using to treat depression. On top of that, he left behind two children and despite a large search of the area, no trace of him was ever found. Number 5 On June 7th of 1989, a 76-year-old woman vanished outside of her remote pioneer home in Almador County in California. Ruth Jacobus was last seen by her longtime husband around noon that day as she wandered outside to grab something from their gardening shed. She never returned. Her husband reported her missing immediately after she went missing, and an intense five-day search of the area produced no results. There was no evidence that foul play was involved in her disappearance. Ruth had knee problems, which prevented her from walking very far or for too long. She also left her glasses inside the home and couldn't have made it very far without them. On the day she disappeared, she was wearing a bright blue dress, which should have made it easier for searchers to find her. The area where she disappeared is a balance of bald hills and heavily wooded areas, surrounded by steep canyon terrain. Ruth was not suffering from amnesia or dementia, and to this day, no trace of her has ever been found. Number 4 On September 30th of 1982, a three-year-old boy vanished within the Sugar Bush area of Minnesota. Kevin J. Aoti was last seen playing in the upstairs of his family's summer cabin around 4.45 p.m. that day. His mother went outside for a moment, and when she returned, the boy was gone. Kevin's Springer Spaniel puppy had also disappeared with him, but his older brother was still inside the home. An extensive nine-day search of the area turned up no sign of him. The older brother had not noticed anything suspicious around the time of Kevin's disappearance. About a week later the boy's dog reappeared and was in good health. Police put a tracking collar on the dog and let it go, hoping it would lead officials to Kevin but it just kept returning home. The area around the cabin is heavily wooded and boggy. In fact, Old Mill State Park, Voyagers National Park, and Mississippi National River and Recreation Area are all well within a short distance of where the boy had vanished. To this day, and over 35 years later, no information has come forward as to the boy's whereabouts. Number 3 On March 20th of this year, David O'Sullivan left Ireland to embark on a five-month trek along the Pacific Crest Trail, starting in Southern California and ending in Canada. The 
25-year-old plan to stop at various towns along the way, relying on local Wi-Fi to update his family on his whereabouts. Because he was a novice hiker, he carefully planned his route, avoiding alpine conditions and areas of heavy snows and rough terrain. However, the last contact he had with his family was on April 7th, and he was not heard from since. He emailed them from the mountain of Idy Wild in Southern California. David was also due to meet a friend in Santa Barbara in early May, but never showed. There were some rumored sightings of David in Southern California months after he was reported missing, but nothing was ever substantiated. According to those who knew him, it was unlike him to not make regular contact with his family. The Pacific Crest Trail spans over 2,600 miles from Mexico to Canada through California, Oregon, and Washington, closely aligning with the Cascade Ranges. Number 2 On September 1st of 1975, a four-year-old boy disappeared at the Natanis Point Campground in Chain of Ponds, Maine, just six miles from the Canadian border. Kurt Newton was camping with his parents, older sister, and three other families from their hometown of Manchester, Maine. Kurt was riding his tricycle near the family's campsite when he vanished between the hours of 10 a.m. and 10.30 that morning. An extensive search of the surrounding woods, which involved the use of bloodhounds and several military helicopters, was described as the biggest search in Maine's history. Police theorized that he became confused while trying to get back to the campsite and wandered off into oblivion. But despite the search, no trace of him was ever found, and to this day, this case remains unsolved. Number 1 On June 3rd of 1985, two men vanished while out on their trip to the East Canyon Reservoir in Utah. 21-year-old David Jeromeo and 14-year-old Lloyd Reese had planned a two-day boating trip with two other friends within the reservoir, and at some point during their outing, Jeremio and Reese became separated from the other two. After several hours of waiting and calling out for the friends, the other two friends became concerned and left the area. Because no one at the time owned a cell phone, the two other friends had to drive back down the canyon before calling police to report them missing. A large search was coordinated that same day, involving more than 100 searchers that included search dogs, dive teams, horseback teams, volunteers, and park rangers. Despite these combined efforts, no trace of either men were ever found. This case continues to baffle experts. And there you go. Just 10 more of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. If you have a case you'd like to bring to my attention, or just something to update us on, feel free to do so in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos. While many of these strange missing person cases tend to occur inside our state and national parks, there are quite a few that happen to fall just right outside of them. Not only that, but many folks who live in rural or heavily wooded areas vanish within an arm's reach of their homes, never to be found. In this video, 
you'll hear a few more of these kinds of cases. Join me as I count down 10 more of the strangest missing person cases out there. Number 10 On August 22nd of 1995, a 22-year-old man named Daniel Edmonds Jr. vanished outside of his rural home in Utah. Daniel was last seen walking out of his family residence and into the Diamond Fork Sixth Water area where he vanished. It was around midnight when he wandered into the park for unknown reasons. Despite a large search effort consisting of more than 100 people, no trace of them was ever found, and few other details are available about this case. Number 9 On January 4th of 2004, a 15-year-old named Austin Sparks vanished somewhere within the Montgomery Creek area of California. Austin was last seen by his father at their residence and noted that Austin was having trouble sleeping. The boy had woken up his father to complain about his sleeplessness but was told to return to bed. The next morning his father discovered the front door open and Austin's footprints in the snow leading away from the house and into some nearby woods. Despite an extensive week-long search of the area, the boy was never found. Despite being special needs, it was unlike him to wander away from his home or family, according to those who knew him. Number 8 On May 2nd, 2013, a 25-year-old man named Devin Young disappeared while camping inside the Trinity Shasta Wilderness. On May 1st, a friend dropped off Devin and his German Shepherd dog at the Hobo Gulch campground for a three-day camping trip. When the friend checked in the following day, there was no response on his cell phone, so the friend contacted a park ranger to have him check on Devin but all the ranger found was his empty tent, a few camping supplies, and a pair of hiking boots next to a tree. An intense five-day search of the campground and surrounding wilderness of the area produced no results of Devin or his dog. To this day, he remains missing. Number 7 On February 7, 2004, a 65-year-old woman named Joan Shelton was last seen walking away from an assisted living facility in the Catalina Foothills area of Arizona, but she never returned. Although she was described as an avid hiker, she had been experiencing some minor medical issues that would hinder her from venturing out too far or too long. She was known to make regular hikes in the area surrounding the facility, but would always return within a couple hours of leaving. The area where she lived and hiked is located in the Santa Catalina Mountains and is a densely wooded area. Despite a large five-day search, she was never heard from again. Number 6 On September 21, 2002, a 48-year-old named Jerry McCohen disappeared while out on a hunting trip near Medicine Lake in California. Jerry was planning on going bow hunting for a few days in the area, but never returned home. An extensive search of the region turned up no sign of him, but on October 8, just a couple of weeks later, his truck was located in a heavily wooded area south of Doorknob Snowmobile Park in the Siskiyou Wilderness. All of his belongings were found inside the truck, 
and foul play was ruled out. No other sight of him was ever found, and few other details remain about this case. Number 5 On April 21st, 2015, a 23-year-old woman named Rhonda Maurice vanished during a hike in the Everglades National Park in Florida. The 23-year-old student was on a field trip with her biology class and was one of about 50 students who entered the park as a group. They set out on a two-hour hike on the Gumbo Limbo Trail to observe the surrounding plant life in the area. Approximately one half of the way back from their turning point, classmates noticed that Rhonda had vanished behind them. Students and staff then split off into several groups to locate the girl, but were unable to do so. When they returned to the trailhead, park authorities were notified, which kicked off an extensive week-long search. However, no trace of Rhonda was ever found. All students and staff were questioned and cleared of any suspicion involving her disappearance. This case continues to baffle experts. Number 4 On June 18th of 1994, a 39-year-old man named Wayne Powell disappeared near his residence on Brushy Butte Mountain in Roseburg, Oregon. Wayne was last seen leaving his residence in the morning of June 18th by a family member who had been staying with him. A search was coordinated following the disappearance involving several dozen professional searchers, volunteers, and tracker dogs, but despite these combined efforts, no trace of them was found. However, a few days into the search, his black Ford F-250 pickup truck was found abandoned in a remote wooded area several miles from his residence. Inside the truck were his wallet, wedding ring, and keys. Few other details are available in this case. Number 3 On October 2nd of 1998, a 36-year-old man named Robert Bobo disappeared while camping in a remote area of the Rogue River National Forest between Prospect and Union Creek, Oregon. A female friend had dropped him off at his campsite in the Woodruff Meadows area near 700 Road as he was last seen by two other hikers in the area on the afternoon of the 2nd. He would made plans to rendezvous with another friend at his campsite, but when the friend arrived, Robert was nowhere to be seen. The strange thing about his disappearance is that Robert left behind everything at his campsite, including his favorite baseball cap, two rifles, all of his clothing, food, water, and his camping gear. Despite a large one-week search involving more than 40 search and rescue personnel, no trace of Robert was ever found. Number 2 On January 26, 2009, a 61-year-old man named Dwight Riggs disappeared while hiking also in the Santa Catalina Mountains foothills area of California. Friends reported Dwight missing after they had not seen him for a prolonged period of time. He lived near the area where he frequently hiked near North Soldier Trail and East Snyder Road. Search and rescue deputies, volunteers from Southern Arizona Rescue Association, sent dogs, and a helicopter conducted a two-week search but could not locate him. Soon thereafter, his case went cold. Then about a year later, his remains were found just a few miles from where he disappeared and completely off course from his intended destination. With his skeletal remains, authorities found his personal belongings and hiking supplies. 
but his boots were missing. Authorities did not suspect foul play in his death, and Dwight was known to be a healthy and well-experienced hiker who knew the area well. Those who knew him were shocked to learn of this discovery. Number 1 On April 9th of 1995, a six-year-old boy named Bryce Herda disappeared outside of the Olympic National Park area. Bryce was hiking with his family on the Shishi Beach Trail at McCall Indian Reservation when he fell slightly behind. When the family turned back to look for him, the boy had completely vanished. The boy's grandfather was chief of police in the area at the time he went missing, and an extensive search by the Coast Guard, diver, and dog teams failed to locate any evidence as to what may have happened to the boy. Many theories arose following his disappearance, including abduction, animal predation, and even getting swept out to sea but none of these were confirmed by any evidence. To this day, the boy remains missing in this case unsolved. And there you have it. Just 10 more of the strangest state and national park disappearances out there. As we know, it doesn't take a dark and stormy day for people to go missing in the rural and wilderness areas of the country. And with the colder months ahead, and the weather quickly changing, be sure to take extra precautions if you too find yourselves itching to venture outdoors. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos. As we dive into Volume 21, I thought I'd do something a little different from previous videos. As we know, a lot of these National Park missing person cases have some pretty strange circumstances that surround them. One consistent fact that keeps resurfacing is the extreme change of weather for the worst after the person goes missing. Of course, it could all be purely coincidental but I think it merits some recognition nonetheless. Join me as I count down 10 more of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. Number 10 On June 7th of 2005, a 56-year-old man named Charles Belts disappeared in the rural Halton area of Spring Creek Township, Pennsylvania. The experienced outdoorsman had planned a four-day camping trip at Clear Creek State Park Campground, but when he failed to check in with his family halfway through his stay, they contacted park officials. Park rangers found his 1992 Plymouth caravan at the campsite with most of his personal belongings still inside. His tent was still set up and a fire ring was still smoldering right next to it, but there was no sign of Charles anywhere. For the entire two days he was there at the campsite, there were no other campers at the campground and therefore no witnesses and no one to interview. An extensive five-day search turned up no results of Charles, and to this day, he remains missing. Number 9 On September 7th of 1997, a 27-year-old man named David Crouch disappeared in the bridger Teton wilderness area of Wyoming. David went hiking with friends and became separated near Lake Island at approximately 10,500 feet of elevation. The three friends explained that David had marched ahead of them for just a moment but never rejoined him. 
The group then ran up the trail for nearly a mile while calling out for Dave, but they never heard or saw him. An extensive search of the area, which involved more than two dozen searchers, including family members, failed to locate any sign of him, and to this day, he remains gone. Number 8 On August 27th of this year, a 33-year-old man named Rodney Letterman disappeared inside the Arkansas State Park in Devil's Den, Arkansas. Rodney became separated from his hiking companions on the afternoon of the 27th while hiking on Butterfield Trail. He and his friend camped overnight in the park before making the hike. At the time the two became separated, Rodney was experiencing a medical issue, so the friend returned to the vehicle to retrieve medical supplies and medication, and when he returned a short time later, Rodney was gone. A large search team kicked off and searchers located Rodney's cell phone around the area where he disappeared, but no other trace of him was found. Shortly after his disappearance, a large storm moved into the area and restricted further search efforts. And to this day, Rodney remains missing. Number 7 On October 12th of 1950, an eight-year-old named Paul Jepson had been riding in a truck with his mother on a rural mountainous road near Bennington, Vermont when he vanished. The two arrived at the family's farm when the mother asked Paul to stay in the cab of the truck while she tended to the family's pigs. The feeding only took a few minutes, but when she returned to the truck, the boy was gone. A mass search for the eight-year-old ensued, including several dozen teams, consisting of more than 200 searchers. Bloodhounds were used in the search and followed a trail near the spot where Paul was last seen, but soon ran cold the further it went on. The area where Paul disappeared sits inside the Bennington Triangle, the area where several people mysteriously vanished between 1920 and 1950. Some of these disappearances include Mitty Rivers, Paul Weldon, James Tefford, Frieda Lander, and several other hunters. Number 6 On August 9th of 2001, a 21-year-old camper vanished inside a remote area near Chilliquin, Oregon. He was last seen that afternoon at the campsite by his two friends who went to a nearby town to gather supplies. And when they returned, he was gone. The friends then notified authorities, which kicked off the five-day search. Other than a single shoe found approximately 40 yards away in some dense woods, no other trace of Jason was found. The friends were initially interviewed and cleared of any suspicion, and the case went cold. Jason remains missing to this day. Number 5 On September 18th of this year, a 58-year-old Russian hiker named Sergei Sheropov one missing inside the Cascade Mountains near North Bend, Washington. He left his two hiking partners to turn around on the Goldmire Hot Springs Trail and head back to his car at the trailhead while the others continued on to the Hot Springs. When they returned to the trailhead two hours later, Sergi's car was still there, but he was nowhere to be seen. A short but extensive search of the area turned up no sign of him. Over a month later, he remains missing. Number 4 
On July 24th of 1997, at approximately 9.30 in the morning, a 24-year-old woman named Amy Rowe Bechtel left her home in Lander, Wyoming, and drove to the Shoshone National Forest to explore the course of a 10K race held by her gym that she was planning on entering. When her husband returned home later that afternoon, Amy wasn't there, and when darkness fell, he called family members and enlisted neighbors to help with the search. The police were then notified shortly after. The next day, Amy's white Toyota station wagon was parked off of a dirt road inside the Shoshone wilderness. The keys were in the car as well as several of her personal belongings. Authorities and family members spent several weeks searching the park and surrounding areas, but no trace of her was ever found. Over 20 years later, she remains missing. Number 3 On May 1st of 1994, a five-year-old named Victor Shoemaker vanished while visiting his grandfather near the Short Mountains National Park in West Virginia. Victor and two of his cousins were playing around the grandfather's mobile home when he headed back to the trailer approximately 50 yards away to get some food. Somewhere between there and the trailer, the boy vanished. That morning, the cousins searched the heavily wooded area before notifying the grandfather who then contacted authorities. A large search followed Victor's disappearance, consisting of several dozen search and rescue personnel, search dogs, family members, and volunteers. Soon after the search kicked off, a record-breaking storm moved into the area and complicated search efforts for nearly a week. No trace of Victor was ever found. Number 2 On July 24th of 1996, a 79-year-old man named Abraham Caliph disappeared in a remote area of Tucson, Arizona. Abraham was last seen as he traveled from Tucson to a drilling job site located between Tombstone and Gleason. He had made arrangements to stay at the Adobe Lodge Motel, but never arrived. Three months after his disappearance, his 1989 Dodge Ram pickup truck was discovered abandoned and stuck in a ravine in a rugged and mountainous area approximately 17 miles from the job site near Mount Diablo State Park. Abraham's personal belongings were found inside the truck. Authorities found plastic flagging tape extending northeast from the truck toward the Dragoon Mountains and in the complete opposite direction of where he was heading. Eventually, the flagging stopped appearing and he was never seen again. Number 1 On August 10th of 1996, a 20-year-old camper named Michael Madden vanished inside the Sandbar Flat area of the Stanislaus National Forest near Sonora, California. Michael planned to meet friends for a camping and fishing trip at the campsite on the 11th, so he arrived a day earlier to set up camp. He brought his dog Matilda, camping and fishing gear and plenty of supplies for the four-day trip. But when the friends arrived at approximately 2 p.m. the following day, there was no sign of him or his dog. However, all of his gear, including a freshly made fire, was still at the campsite. After a brief search by the friends, they reported him missing and an extensive search ensued, but produced no results of his whereabouts. Four days later, his dog returned to the campsite, dehydrated. And to this day, 
No sign of Michael has ever surfaced. And there you have it. Just 10 more of the strangest missing person cases to add to the hundreds we've covered so far. And that's merely just the beginning. Bundle up, stay dry, and stay safe. Thanks for watching, and subscribe for more videos. reach of 2018, and we can't help but look back at all the disappearances that we saw over this last year. In fact, we covered more than 110 cases over the span of 11 volumes just in 2017 alone, and we're not done yet. Join me as I count down. 10 more of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. Number 10 In the summer of 1966, an 8-year-old boy named Dennis Johnson was visiting Yellowstone National Park with his family when he disappeared. The parents began setting up a picnic while Dennis and his sister went to play around the site. A few minutes later, Dennis ran up to his parents and told them that his sister was lost in the woods. According to the father, Dennis had been taught some basic wilderness survival skills and even for an eight-year-old had a good head on his shoulders. So he trusted the boy to help him find the sister, so they split up and agreed to meet back at the camp a short time later. The parents eventually found the sister, but Dennis never returned. The National Park Service searched for him for weeks, putting thousands of hours into finding him. But as the time marched on with no clues, the parents consulted a psychic who had a dark vision of what may have happened to Dennis. The psychic told them that she thought he might have drowned in a pond somewhere. So they focused their efforts on any body of water they could find. To this day, the mystery of what happened to Dennis is still unknown. Number 9 On January 16th of 1973, a five-year-old girl named Anna Waters disappeared while playing in the backyard of her family's remote cabin on Parissima Creek Road in rural San Mateo County, California. Anna had just arrived home from her kindergarten class at Alvin Hatch Elementary, changed clothes, then went out to play. Her parents were inside the cabin, and after they noticed how quiet things got, they went out to look for her, but she was nowhere in sight. The police were then notified immediately after, which kicked off an extensive search of the area. But unfortunately, she was never seen again. Both Anna's mother and stepfather were interviewed and cleared of any suspicion. The area where Anna disappeared sits directly in the middle of three state parks, including the San Bruno Mountain State Park, Memorial County Park, and Portola Redwood State Park. Number 8 
On September 17th, a 45-year-old man named John Yon Wan vanished inside the Grand Canyon National Park while out on a hike. Park rangers reported John Yon missing after discovering his Toyota Camry at the New Hence Trailhead near Moran Point on the south rim of the park with an expired permit. A search involving two dozen searchers, a helicopter, search dogs, and volunteers spent three days combing the area, and other than a single boot belonging to John Yon located two miles off the trail, no other trace of him was found. This is an area of the park where several others have disappeared in recent times. We've covered some of these cases in previous volumes. Number 7 Although nearly 10 years apart, two men went missing in the same area of Yosemite National Park under similar circumstances, so I decided to group the two cases together. In July of 1988, a 25-year-old hiker named Tim Barnes went missing during a hike near Murphy Creek Trailhead at Tenaya Lake while heading to Half Dome. He was last seen by other hikers approximately 9 a.m. that morning. Search and Rescue spent nearly a week looking for him, but no trace of him was ever found. Then, nearly 10 years later, a 28-year-old hiker named David Paul Morrison went missing in that same area as well while setting out to Half Dome. An extensive four-day search turned up no sign of him other than one of his hiking boots dangling from a branch a short distance away from the trail that he embarked on. To this day, both men's disappearances continue to baffle those involved in their search. Number 6 On November 25th of this year, a 22-year-old theater student named Erin Henry vanished from her home in Arcata, California. She was last seen by her roommate on the night of the 25th before she disappeared. Erin had recently suffered a broken ankle and was not able to walk without crutches or a knee scooter. For the next week, an extensive search ensued yielding no clues as to her whereabouts. Nearly two weeks after she vanished, a Caltrans worker discovered an e-scooter near Patrick's Point State Park. He then notified police. Officers responded and searched the area, ultimately finding Henry dead a short distance away and at the bottom of a ravine. She was found at the foot of a large boulder called Elephant Rock, just south of the park near the West Haven exit on Highway 101. The community was shocked and baffled how the disabled student made it nearly 15 miles from her home in the middle of the night on that scooter, only then to climb Elephant Rock and fall to the bottom. Investigators stated that her body showed signs of trauma consistent with the fall. However, toxicology results show no signs of drug or alcohol use, and that those who knew her state that she was not suicidal. Though official reports state her injuries were most likely self-inflicted, many who knew her stated that this was unlike her. Number 5 Aaron Henry wasn't the only person to have vanished in Arcata, California in the month of November of this year. A 25-year-old French-Canadian man named Felix Poirier vanished on the evening of November 6th, just a couple weeks before Aaron did. Felix and some friends were drinking in a wildlife preserve near the Arcata Marsh when he went missing. 
When the friends awoke the next morning, Felix was gone, but his glasses, cell phone, and shoes were still by his sleeping bag. A short time later, authorities were notified and a week-long search ensued, combing the entire marsh area with search teams, dogs, and even drones. During the week-long search, a large storm moved into the area and rained for days on end. Even when the initial search ended, that didn't stop some from continuing on with it. Felix's father and other family members traveled out to Arcata to search for him, and on November 20th, nearly two weeks after he vanished, it was the father himself who discovered his son's body, caught in the thick underbrush within a short distance of the campsite. Authorities concluded that there was no indication of foul play, and that Felix's death appeared to be accidental drowning. However, his friends state that he was the least intoxicated of the group, and still had a clear head when they went to sleep. Searchers were baffled how and why he ended up where he did. Number 4 On February 19th of 1999, a 48-year-old pediatrician named Dr. Catherine Wong vanished after a day of skiing at the Bear Valley Ski Resort in California. Catherine and her husband John Wong were on their last run for the trip when she disappeared. The two were skiing down a slope and at some point Catherine fell behind when the husband reached the bottom of the hill, he expected to see her coming down, but she never did. He then reported her missing around 4 p.m. that evening. Alpine County launched an intense ground search that continued for the next several days, combing the slope from top to bottom and following any tracks they may have seen in the snow. When the search failed to produce any results, a second search was initiated this time involving aerial assistance. About that time, an aggressive storm moved into the area, bringing the search to a halt. Even when it resumed a few days later, there was still no sign of Catherine. A few months later, hikers discovered tiny bone fragments and scattered clothing in a remote area and far off course from the ski resort. Bear Valley Search and Rescue filtered into the area and discovered more scattered remains, ski equipment, and clothing that belonged to the doctor in an area 180 degrees away from where she went missing, and miles off course. Many involved in the search were completely perplexed how she could have ended up where she did, considering there was really nowhere to go but down on that slope. Number 3 In December of 2014, a 30-year-old doctor named Talika Patrick failed to show up for work in Kalamazoo, Michigan. A short time later, her car was discovered abandoned more than 115 miles away in a ditch off of Interstate 94 in a rural part of Indiana. Police then brought in search dogs to search the area where her car was found and her scent was tracked to the edge of a heavily wooded area, but there the trail went cold. Dr. Talika's belongings were still in the car, including her purse with cash, credit cards, her driver's license, as well as some of her clothing. Investigators noted that nothing looked out of place and that there were no signs of robbery or foul play. It wasn't until four months later, on April 6th, that her body was discovered in an Indiana lake not far from where her car was found. Her car key was found in her pocket and her cause of death was concluded to be accidental drowning. Later on after the discovery of her body, 
New details emerged in the case and revealed that Talika had a sudden change of her mental state just prior to her disappearance. According to fellow co-workers, she became increasingly anxious, paranoid, and began to suspect that something was after her. Those who knew her stated that Talika lived a clean and healthy life and never did any drugs. This case continues to baffle experts. Number 2 In September of 2014, a 38-year-old man named Aaron Hedges vanished inside the crazy mountains of Montana during a routine bow hunting trip that he had been on more than a few occasions. Aaron and his hunting party entered the crazies and at some point decided to split up. The party he was with decided to set up camp at Moose Lake while Aaron went out by his lonesome to another lake a short distance away. However, he apparently missed a turn and kept on tracking east on the trail along Sweetgrass Creek. That was the last time anyone saw or heard of him. More than 100 volunteers and members of law enforcement filtered into the area within a week following his disappearance. On the seventh day of the search, searchers located Aaron's boots and water bladder near an area called Sweetgrass Falls. About that time, a large storm moved into the area and officially put an end to the search. Then in August of 2016, nearly two years later, a rancher on horseback spotted skeletal remains approximately 15 miles from where he was last seen and about 6 miles from where the initial search was conducted two years previously. An investigation into the cause of death is still pending. Number 1 On November 23rd of 1991, a 17-year-old high school student named Corey Fay disappeared while elk hunting in the Badger Creek Wilderness area of Oregon. Corey and two of his friends arrived inside the wilderness area and decided to split up later that afternoon and meet back at their car. When the friends regrouped at the car a short time later, Corey was nowhere to be seen. Authorities were then notified and a large search kicked off. The search and rescue effort was comprehensive with around 250 searchers including helicopters, horseback riders, hikers, family members, police, and seven of the best trained search dogs they could find. The search focused on 12 square miles for 10 days and 10 nights. However, not a single trace of them was found. The official search ended on December 1st, but many volunteers kept at it for much longer. Nearly a year later, in September of 1992, two hunters found Corey's backpack and rifle around 10 miles from where he was last seen. A quarter mile from the backpack, searchers found small bone fragments and just one tooth. Strangely enough, no clothing was found at the location. Thirty searchers then did a grid search of the ridge line approximately two miles, but failed to find any other trace of him. Corey was an experienced hunter and outdoorsman. He was also trained in wilderness survival, equipped with a compass, solar blanket, food, water, rifle, and other necessities. This case continues to baffle experts. And there you have it, just 10 more of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. I've said it before and I'll say it again, 
If you find yourself fixing to go out into sweet mother nature, remember the poor folks who went out to do the same, but never returned. Use good judgment, communication, and common sense. Travel in numbers. Carry protection, and never go by your lonesome. Have a good new year, everyone. Well, the new year's in full swing, and unfortunately, so are the disappearances. Just a few weeks into 2018, and we're already seeing our fair share of cases popping up on that radar. In this video, I'll address a few of them. So join me as I count down 10 more of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. Number 10 As recent as January 23rd of this year, a 65-year-old hiker went missing inside the Big Bend Ranch State Park in Colorado. Tim Reed was reported missing after he left for a hike on the morning of the 23rd and failed to return to his truck at Closed Canyon Trailhead, which follows the river for several miles. His girlfriend reported him missing when he failed to check in with her. Presidio Police, park officials, and a handful of volunteers kicked off the search, as well as a DPS helicopter. So far, the search has covered the Arenosa area of the park to La Cuesta River, and so far, no trace of him has been found. The girlfriend stated that it was unlike him to venture out too far for too long by his lonesome. If more information comes forward, I'll be sure to update you. Number 9 Another recent case involves that of a 27-year-old man named Vadim Mukin, who was last seen camping with friends at Larch Mountain Campground on New Year's Day of this year. Vadin was camping with friends at Sunset Falls campground when he went missing. According to the sheriff's office, Vadim and several friends gathered at the campground to do a little off-roading in the nearby hills. They all went out for the day and returned for a break before setting out again around 6 p.m. that afternoon. However, Vadim decided to stay behind at the camp, and that was the last time he was seen. He was then reported missing a short time later when the friends failed to find him. Search crews consisting of over 100 police and volunteers spent the next several days combing the entire area, and on the third day of the search, they found his code in the water along the east fork of the Lewis River and about three miles away from the campsite. Dive teams and volunteer kayakers ran a search up and down that river for several miles, but so far, no other trace of them has been found. Family members state that it was unlike Vadin not to consistently keep in touch with them, and that he was familiar with the outdoors.
Number 8 On July 24th of 1972, a 20-year-old medical student named Dikran Najian vanished inside Yosemite National Park during a solo day hike. He was last seen by other hikers at Camp Curry Village of Yosemite on the morning of July 24th as he checked in, but never did check out. At the time of his disappearance, Dikran was a medical student from Cambridge University, vacationing in the U.S. with plans to visit Florida after his stay at the park before returning to the school in Cambridge. Case notes indicate that he asked the registration desk attendant how to get to Half Dome, but that was it. Search teams then focused their efforts on all access points to and from Half Dome in case he had ventured out there. Even with search dogs and scores of guest interviews, not a single trace of him was ever found. Dikron joins a long list of missing person cases in that park. Number 7 On January 4th of this year, park rangers inside Yosemite National Park discovered a car rental with an expired permit parked at Camp 4 near Yosemite Valley Lodge. Upon further investigation, they found that the car was registered to a 41-year-old named Maximilian Schweizer, and unfortunately, officials could not release any other details on where he was traveling nor if he was even a guest there at the lodge. As far as we know, this case is still being investigated. Some folks speculate that he may have ventured out onto Yosemite Falls Trail, which is located near Camp 4. Though winter weather conditions that day would have made it unpleasant to do so. I'll keep you updated should any new information come forward. Number 6 In August of 2016, a 46-year-old hiker vanished in the vicinity of the Winter Creek Trail near the Alieska Resort of Alaska. Bradford Roach, who had been expected to fly home to Texas, decided to stay at the resort a few more days instead. On August 2nd, he signed a log at the trailhead, and that was the last time anyone heard from him. More than 100 people from an array of South Central Alaska search and rescue agencies were looking for him, but to no success. As the days went on following his disappearance, trooper helicopters conducted aerial reconnaissance searches in a last-ditch effort to find him. But despite these resources, no trace of him was ever found. Alieska Resort is a ski resort in Girdwood, Alaska, and is surrounded by what is described as endless walking and hiking trails. Number 5 On July 31st of 2017, a 74-year-old man named Melvin Heaps went missing during his hike in the Uinta Mountains of Utah. A frequent hiker of the Uintas, Melvin was believed to be trekking along the Crystal Lake Trailhead. He was reported missing after failing to return from the hike the following day. In addition to the county's deputies and search and rescue personnel, U.S. Forest Service workers, Utah Highway Patrol, search dogs, and even military planes attempted to find Melvin, but not a shred of evidence was located. After several days, and exhausting all resources, the search was scaled back, and after two weeks, it ended altogether. Even though Melvin was partially deaf, 
He knew the area well, and was in good physical and mental condition according to those who knew him. At the time he went missing, he was wearing bright red hiking gear, and searchers were perplexed how he could have disappeared so easily wearing those clothes. This isn't the first time someone's gone missing in those mountains. In 2004, a 12-year-old boy named Garrett Bargely vanished during a Boy Scout outing, and in 1964, a 15-year-old boy disappeared while walking his two dogs. Number 4 In April of 2015, a 16-year-old hiker named Warren Ward went missing inside the Everglades National Park in Florida. Park officials have little information available regarding his case, but did state that he entered the park by himself around noon on April 26th, but never left. It is unclear which trail he took, but investigators have reason to believe he took the Snake Bite Trail which is considered an easy 1.9 mile hike. The trail goes out and back and runs as straight as an arrow that goes between the main park road and a boardwalk that overlooks the water. It is a well-traveled trail and on the day he went missing over a hundred visitors had hiked through it. A search operation consisting of more than two dozen professionals, canine units, and water team spent nearly a week trying to track down Warren's whereabouts, but no trace of him was found. To this day, he remains missing, and there are more questions than answers. Number 3 In mid-May of 2015, a 44-year-old man named Randy Rososi went missing inside Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky. Randy had gone to the park for a day hike, something he had done on numerous occasions by himself, so when he failed to check in with his family the following day, they contacted park officials. A search kicked off consisting of over three dozen search and rescue personnel, park rangers, canine units, volunteers, and family members. On the third day, park officials discovered his car abandoned at the visitor center with all of his belongings still inside. This reinvigorated search efforts and they began to move deeper into the park which consists of nearly 53,000 acres and about 80 square miles of rough terrain, hilly wooded areas, and miles of cave systems. About a week into the search, the wind and rain kicked into high gear, delaying search efforts and forcing them to scale back earlier than anticipated. Several months later, a cave service worker found a single hiking boot deep in a remote cave that they had thought might have belonged to Randy and miles away from the visitor center, though it was never officially confirmed by officials to be his boot. To this day, no other trace of Randy has been found. Number 2 In October of 1991, a 33-year-old engineer named Glenn Allen Mackey went missing inside Crater Lake National Park during an extended tour of Western National Parks he was on. An extensive search ensued consisting of more than 200 searchers, but after nearly a week, the search ended due to limited resources and worsening weather. Around the time the search ended, his car was found in a parking area of a 7,100 foot elevation viewing area of the park, with all of his belongings still inside. The case eventually went cold. 
Nearly 16 years later, a firefighter discovered skeletal remains in a remote area of the park, about 12 miles from where Glenn's car was found. Officials have not yet determined whether or not the bones belong to Glenn, but information seems to be pointing in that direction. The bones were discovered weeks before 8-year-old Sammy Boelke went missing and has yet to be found. Crater Lake National Park has a long history of disappearances that span several decades. A few of these cases include Nick Carlino, Corey Watkins, Jennifer Pierce, and several others. Of course, the one that many of us keep hearing about was the strange disappearance of Charles McCuller, whose remains were eventually found under some pretty strange circumstances in the mid-1970s. Number 1 On October 10th of 2014, a 37-year-old man named Rico Harris vanished inside the Yolo County Regional Parks area near Rumsey, California. The former Harlem Globetrotter had spoken with his mother the morning before he vanished saying he was stopping at the park to rest up before continuing north to Seattle. Shortly after the call, his phone was turned off, and that's when family members became concerned and notified park officials in the area. A few days later, his car was found inside the park near Cache Creek. A search party scoured the area, only to find his backpack and phone which had a newly taken photo of Rico standing next to the Welcome to Yellow County sign. Investigators stated that there were no signs that any crime was committed, considering most of his belongings were still inside the vehicle. To this day, no other trace of him has surfaced, and his disappearance continues to baffle experts and those who knew him. This isn't the first time someone's gone missing in that area. In fact, a 17-year-old named Enrique Rio, a 16-year-old named Elijah Moore, and a 31-year-old named Dolores Wolf, and a few others disappeared in that area as well, sparking fears that a serial killer may have been involved. But despite search and rescue efforts, none of these people, nor any trace of them, has been found. As the weather continues to improve gradually, so will the opportunities to go out and enjoy the outdoors. If you'd like to update us on any of these cases, feel free to do so in the comment section below. I know we'd all appreciate that. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos. Every year, hundreds of people are reported missing in our state and national parks all over the country. While most of these folks are eventually located, many others seem to disappear altogether and are never found despite extensive search and rescue efforts. Join me as I count down 10 more of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. Number 
ten. On April 6th of this year, a 23-year-old camper went missing at Singletary Lake State Park in North Carolina while out on a church retreat. Jesse Esgro was one of several campers who went out canoeing at the lake, but when everyone else returned a couple hours later, he did not. The members then notified park officials and a search was initiated. For the next several days, professional search and rescue outfits from surrounding counties joined the effort totaling more than 70 personnel using dive teams, boats with sonar, helicopters, and search dogs, searching the entire lake and surrounding area. After several days without a single trace of Jesse or his canoe, weather conditions worsened, complicating further search efforts. Due to bad weather, the length of time Jesse had been missing, and the lack of any sign that he left the lake, the search is now a recovery effort. Jesse is known as an avid outdoorsman, a good swimmer, and his fellow church members were baffled how he could have vanished so quickly when they were all within an eye shot of one another. This case is still ongoing, and I'll be sure to update you should any new evidence come forward. Number 9 On August 1st of 2017, a 37-year-old man named Travis Butler was reported missing after failing to check in out of his hotel room in a small town just outside of Grand Canyon National Park. Little is known about this case, including why and how Travis had planned to stay at the hotel, but some speculate that he may have wandered into the nearby trail system surrounding the park for a small day hike, according to park officials, who may have seen him prior to his disappearance. His blue 2017 Nissan truck was found in the hotel parking lot, but there were no clues pointing to his whereabouts or what may have happened to him despite all the searches involved. As of April 2018, no new updates have come forward about this case. But if they do, I'll be sure to let you know. Number 8 On February 1st of 2013, a 34-year-old named Jason Kyles disappeared inside the Annadale State Park just outside of Santa Rosa, California, while out on a day hike. Jason was last spotted by other hikers at the Lawndale Trail inside the park, and after that, he was nowhere to be seen. Shortly before entering the park, Jason had packed his truck with miscellaneous items, including a bird bath, some pictures, and his son's guitar. He left a note for his wife stating he was going to visit his cousin in New York and focus making money in the music industry. Jason, who had a history of seasonal depression, had also exhibited increasingly odd behavior prior to disappearing, and those who knew him were surprised to learn that his pickup truck was found inside the park a few days after he was reported missing. The five-day search involving more than 40 personnel located his discarded clothes and shoes in a remote area within the park, and to this day, no other trace of him was discovered. Later on, a bicyclist reported that he may have seen Jason in the park, naked and chanting. Authorities theorized that he may have experienced a psychotic break and became disoriented not recalling his whereabouts or even his own identity. Number 7 On March 9th of this year, 
a 25-year-old avid hiker and outdoorsman named David Blake, disappeared inside the Kennesaw National Battlefield Park in Georgia while out on a short day hike. After failing to return home the following day, David's mother called park officials to report his absence. A search immediately ensued, which included several dozen searchers with dog teams, and they eventually found his car parked near an overflow car park off Old Highway 41. Inside it was some of his hiking supplies, and his keys were left in the cup holder, which told investigators he hadn't intended on venturing off for too long. Searchers first assumed that he entered a nearby trail and decided to venture up on Kennesaw Mountain. But without a single trace of evidence pointing to this, they were left out in the cold, and even after three weeks of intense searches, he remains missing. David was noted for being very familiar with the park's trails, having hiked them several times. The man's mother stated that he was in good spirits prior to disappearing and gave no indication of being gone for very long. Number 6 In October of 2012, a 48-year-old man named Doug Sutton Jr. disappeared in a remote area just outside of Ashboro, North Carolina. His relatives became concerned and contacted authorities when he failed to check in with them within a couple days of setting out to the area. A search involving over 50 people, several dogs, a dive team, and a helicopter crew conducted a four-day search in the area and eventually located his truck in a remote area between the Sheets Gap and the Devil's Garden Overlooks at an elevation of around 3,400 feet. Inside, authorities found several packs of cigarettes and around $100 in cash. Little else is known about this case, but there was no indication of foul play or that Doug intended to disappear off the radar. The case has been open for several years and nothing has surfaced to explain why he would have drove from Ashboro two and a half hours to an area where he had no known connection. His disappearance continues to baffle many. Number 5 In February of this year, a 71-year-old psychiatrist named Bruce Decker went missing inside the John Boyd Thatcher State Park in a remote area of New York. According to park officials, Bruce was last seen on February 19th inside the visitor center of the park, but it wasn't until Wednesday the 21st that his car was found in the parking lot with an expired permit. Authorities then called in a search to his residence and tried to contact anyone that may have seen or heard of him, but no family member could be found and nobody reported him missing so officials assumed he was still inside that park. A search involving more than two dozen professional searchers and a handful of volunteers searched around 2,400 acres before extreme weather moved into the area, complicating search efforts. The search was scaled back after several days, and not a single clue has turned up. It was speculated that the inexperienced hiker had only intended on a short day hike within the Indian Ladder Trail, and searchers were baffled how he could have disappeared where he did, considering the time and resources utilized in the search effort. Number 4 On August 4th of 2014, a 36-year-old man named Mark Buckout disappeared while hiking inside Grand Canyon National Park. Park officials stated that he was last seen about 4.30 p.m. by other hikers as he trekked across the South Rim, 
just west of Grandview Point, near U.S. Route 64. It wasn't immediately known what his hiking plans were for that afternoon, but based on evidence inside his car, and those who knew of his brief hiking plans, he wasn't planning on being out there for more than a few hours. Nonetheless, a search team combed the area and spotted a body several hundred feet below the rim in the vicinity of his last known whereabouts. I wasn't able to find any other details on the exact identification of those remains, but searchers seemed to point that it was indeed Mark. Searchers and family members were perplexed how the experienced communication specialist ended up where he did, considering hiking conditions were perfect that day, and Mark was not suicidal. Number 3 On January 25th of 2002, a 20-year-old surveyor named Christopher Tompkins vanished while working with a survey crew in a remote area near Warm Springs Road in Harris County, Georgia. Christopher was accompanied by three other co-workers, all of whom were walking back to their work truck after a long day's work. The workers were approximately 50 feet from each other, with Christopher at the back of the line. At around 1.30 that afternoon, one of the other crew members had looked away from him for just a moment, and when he looked back, Christopher was gone. The crew members backtracked only to find his work tools strewn along the road. His disappearance was reported shortly after and nearly a hundred volunteers searched the area in a joint effort with a dozen professional searchers and on that second day one of his boots was found just inside the wood line from the road as well as a piece of blue fiber from his pants on a nearby barbed wire fence. The search intensified and for the next few days they expanded their search but no trace of him had turned up. However, five months after his disappearance, a local farmer discovered the other boot about 900 yards away from the point where he vanished and next to a swamp. All these years later, no other trace of him was found. I chose to cover this case not only due to the strangeness behind Christopher's disappearance and how it parallels many other cases, but also because of its proximity to Flat Rock Park, which is only a short distance away from Warm Springs Road. Number 2 In October of 2002, a 66-year-old retired marine and hiker named Walter Reinhard vanished during a day hike inside Yosemite National Park. Walter's sons reported him missing on October 12th after failing to check in with him that night. The sons suspected that Walter, who was expected to leave the park that day, might have decided to stay longer once he hit the trail. They suspected that he might have opted for a longer hike, which affords a stunning view of the Tuolumne River Gorge. Searchers eventually found his car at the White Wolf Trailhead west of Tuolumne Meadows. They searched all the trails within a 150 mile radius of the White Wolf Trailhead and no trace of him was ever found. Park officials have no reason to suspect foul play was involved but they figured he decided to venture alone into those woods, and then something went wrong. Walter was active in the hiking club at the retirement community where he had lived near Tucson, but mostly he hiked alone, and even considering his age, many of his hiking companions were unable to keep up with him. To this day, the 66-year-old Marine remains missing. Number 1 
In July of 2010, a 57-year-old climber named Eric Lewis vanished inside Mount Rainier National Park when he became separated from his two companions. Eric went missing when his climbing companions discovered that he had unclipped from the rope at 14,000 feet and simply disappeared. The three-man team was ascending from Gibraltar Ledge's route when a freak storm settled upon them, bringing high winds and visibility as little as five feet. According to park officials, Eric's friends, who were just slightly ahead of him, reached a resting point and waited for his arrival, but he never did. As they began reeling in the rope, they discovered an empty rope with a knot at the end. At this point, visibility improved, and they scanned the area and called out for him, but he was nowhere to be seen. They then proceeded to the summit in case Eric had skirted around them. After returning to Camp Muir at around 10,200 feet, they reported the incident to park officials, and a major search and rescue effort was kicked off. Mountaineers, climbers, guides, and helicopters endured a week-long search, but were unable to find any shred of evidence of Eric's whereabouts. The search was scaled back, and after another two weeks, it ended altogether. To this day, Eric Lewis remains missing, and searchers are still haunted by this case. I chose this case as number one, because not only was Eric an experienced and technical climber, the amount of resources involved in the search should have revealed some clues as to what happened to him. And there you have it. As the summer season quickly approaches, we'll begin to see a spike in park numbers, and it's only a matter of time before more folks end up in the same situation. Be cautious out there, and you'll hear from me soon. Every year, hundreds of people go missing in our state and national parks all over the country. And just sometimes, they even disappear in our own backyards. Many of these folks are never found despite extensive search and rescue efforts, and we're often left scratching our heads as to what happened to them. Join me as I count down. 10 more of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. Note that there are too many cases that never see the light of day, while many others are simply lost to the hands of time. Number 10 On June 4th of this year, a 55-year-old hiker named Tim Cannon went missing during a hike up Iron Mountain in Colorado. Tim left his home early that morning, telling his wife he would be going up that mountain, which is a reddened peak with an elevation of 12,525 feet, and is part of the Snaffles Range. So when his wife notified authorities of his disappearance the following day he was due back, they formulated a plan to comb the wilderness areas of the vicinity 
of Tim's stated destination, as well as any trails leading away from where his car was found near the Deep Creek Trail, which provides access to Iron Mountain. More than 80 San Miguel County Sheriff's Office personnel, search and rescue team members, and volunteer citizens continued the search for the missing hiker, and by the fourth day, the National Guard and the Colorado Highlands Helicopter Department began searching the above tree line. But despite these combined efforts, no trace of Tim has been located yet. Tim's wife stated that he was considered an experienced hiker and would most likely have brought appropriate gear with him as well as an adequate supply of food and water for his trip. He was always prepared, she noted. This case is still being investigated. Number 9 On October 10th of 1988, a 28-year-old forestry worker and U.S. Army vet went missing during his hike on Mount San Jacinto in California. Randy Spring had asked to be dropped off at the intersection of Whitewater and Interstate 10 near the base of the mountain that morning, where he planned to spend the next three days hiking up the north side of the mountain, and then would hitchhike back home or call his family for a ride. After being dropped off, he set off onto the mountain, carrying an army green backpack with enough food and water to get him through the hike, as well as various overnight camping gear and a map. Unfortunately, this would be the last time he was ever seen. After failing to return home, a large search was conducted by over 250 personnel, including dog teams, aerial resources, volunteers, and many other veterans and family members close to Randy. Several miles up the trail, a search dog led investigators into a dried up creek bed where they discovered a single boot they believe may have belonged to him. But this was the only potential evidence pointing to his whereabouts, and even after 30 years, no other trace of Randy has come forward. Number 8 On August 26th of 1973, an 18-year-old named Oren Anderson went missing while fishing at a pond in a remote wooded area near McQuan, Wisconsin. He told his mother he would be there for the afternoon and would return around dinner time. According to the mother, he would do this almost every chance he got and it became routine for him. So when he failed to return that night, she knew something wasn't right. A brief three-day search of the pond and surrounding wooded area failed to locate any sign of him other than his fishing gear which was located by the shore and a tennis shoe which was located in the nearby woods. Nearly a hundred folks were involved in the search as well as dog teams, divers, and Native American trackers. But despite these efforts, he was never heard from again and few other details are available in this case. Number 7 On December 19th of 2015, a 37-year-old named Melissa McCran disappeared while on a short run inside the Monama Falls area of the Columbia River Gorge in Oregon. She was reported missing after failing to show up to work the following day. So when authorities were notified, they noted that her cell phone was last used around 10 a.m. on the morning she disappeared, near Cascade Avenue, just north of Tigard, and her car was found soon thereafter, parked at the Multnomah Falls parking lot just a couple of days afterward with an expired permit. Over a hundred searchers scoured 150 miles of trails in the gorge system, focusing on around Franklin Ridge, 
where they believe she may have ventured into, but nothing was ever found despite both ground and air resources. On December 24th, a massive storm kicked off the winter season and moved into the area, forcing the search to be suspended. To this day, Alyssa remains missing. Number 6 In June of this year, 31-year-old Casey Zipro disappeared while camping inside the Colonial Creek Campground near Diablo Lake in the Northern Cascades region. He and his longtime friend had checked into the campground at campsite number 3 the night before and had breakfast together the following morning. The two went out for a short hike and returned to camp around noon to eat and rest up. But at some point, the friend took a short nap in his hammock, and when he woke, Casey was nowhere to be seen. The friend assumed Casey had left briefly to use the restroom or grab something from his car, but when he searched both areas, there was no sign of him. The friend then contacted authorities soon thereafter, and an intense five-day search ensued, involving more than 50 searchers, including the local sheriff's department, a canine crew, a personal helicopter, and two dozen volunteers. On the third day, the National Park System joined the effort and located some of his belongings in a tree line surrounding the campground, but no other trace of Casey was found. This case continues to baffle many. Number 5 On February 19th of 1983, an experienced mountaineer and outdoorsman from Germany disappeared inside Rocky Mountains National Park in Colorado. 27-year-old Rudolf Motter had planned to meet a friend at Thunder Pass within the park to go skiing. When Rudolph failed to meet up at the specified location, the friend contacted authorities and a week-long search was initiated by park authorities and dozens of volunteers. Though searchers were able to confirm that Rudolph had been within miles of the meeting spot based on tracks they found, no other trace of him was located. While some believe he may have gotten lost, Many others discounted this theory given the kind of experience Rudolph had in the outdoors. Rudolph had spent four years in the German Mountain Army Corps, conducted two successful expeditions to the Himalayas, and was also a seasoned forestry worker. If anyone knew how to safely navigate through those woods, he would have been the guy. But even after 30 years, his disappearance still baffles many. Number 4 On October 7th of 2013, a 74-year-old hunter named Barry Zeldin left his maze landing home to check out a deer stand in the Warren Grove Recreation Area of New Jersey. He told his wife he was planning to put some bait at the stand and would be back within the next day or so. So when that time came and went, she became concerned, but she also mentioned it wasn't unlike him to stay out there a little longer, especially if he had gotten a deer or made a spontaneous hunting trip. When Barry still hadn't returned on that third day, his wife contacted authorities. A week-long search of the area by dozens of search and rescue personnel turned up little results as to his whereabouts. His truck was located near an unmarked trail that eventually led to the deer stand where searchers believe he may have visited, but no other trace of Barry was found. Barry's wife mentioned that they had celebrated their 50th anniversary and that Barry was in good spirits. Number 3 
On April 12th of 1976, a 19 year old named Steve Thomas disappeared near Mount Marcy inside the Adirondack region of New York. Stephen had been with a group of about five other college students, which planned to spend a couple days hiking and camping inside the High Peaks Wilderness area. Even though temperatures hit lows around 10 degrees, the group had prepared themselves for the cold journey. On the afternoon of the second day, the group climbed to the Lower Plateau Lintu region before heading to Upper Plateau and from there they could see the summit about a mile away. But by now, they were cold and wet and the group decided to stay put, build a fire, and tackle the summit the following day. However, Stephen then told the rest of them that he was not yet ready to stop and wanted to trek on a little further, but would return shortly. So he left his backpack and gear with the rest of the crew and headed out. When Steve didn't return the following hour, the others became concerned and set out to find him. At this point, the weather began to worsen as the winds picked up to around 55 to 60 miles per hour, and the temperatures dropped to around minus 40 degrees. The group decided it was too dangerous to continue searching and were quickly driven back by the harsh conditions. However, the group would spend the next several hours going in and out of the search mode, waiting for the weather conditions to improve, and would return to camp when they'd worsen again. It was then they decided to end their trip and head back to get help, and when they eventually did, over a hundred professional search and rescue personnel filtered into the area and after nearly a week decided to terminate the search. Many speculate that Steve may have gotten caught in the storm and without his supplies he may have succumbed to the elements. But even after weather conditions improved and the snow melted, many volunteers kept the search active for months but were unable to find any clue as to what happened to Steve. Number 2 On May 1st of 1994, a five-year-old boy named J.R. Shoemaker disappeared while exploring the woods with his two cousins near his grandfather's house just outside of Short Mountain Wildlife Reserve in Virginia. His two cousins, both eight and nine, had been with him the entire time, yet at some point it got real quiet, and JR just disappeared, according to what the cousins had told their grandfather and the investigators. The boys played for about 30 minutes until approximately 8.30 a.m., which is around the time G.R. went missing. After a brief search by the grandfather and the two cousins, authorities were called in and search teams began looking within the hour, focusing their efforts on a four square mile area around the trailer, believing that the boy lacked the endurance to get any further than that. The search for G.R. lasted five days in the rainy weather and with temperatures in the 30s, before being called off on Thursday on the evening of May 5th. Over the next five months, National Guard and Army Reserve units used weekend training time to search for the boy. In addition, the FBI was eventually called in. It was noted that the boys had wandered safely in the woods together many times before and knew where to stop and this was one of few places where the family would let their son play out of sight. The area where JR disappeared is considered extremely dangerous for a five-year-old, as the paths are steep and twisted with thick forest and boulder fields. So searchers assumed he wouldn't have wandered off very far before he would be found. But even after 25 years, no sign of JR has ever surfaced and this case remains unsolved. Number one. 
On November 11th of 1985, a 64-year-old hunter went missing near Broad Top Mountain in the south central area of Pennsylvania. Edward Carbaugh, who also went by Red, and his brother-in-law Ralph headed to a field off of an old logging road to hunt turkey. The men split up at around 2 p.m each taking a different path through the woods on and planned to meet back at Edward's truck at a specified time. At around 4 p.m., the friend made it back to the truck and waited, but as darkness approached, he became concerned and assumed that Edward had gotten lost. So he fired a half a dozen rounds into the air, hoping Red would hear the gunfire and follow it. Unfortunately, Edward had the keys to his truck on him, so Ralph made the long track to a nearby town to get help, and when he did, it was already dark out. A search party was formed the following day at a nearby volunteer fire company. For almost two weeks, more than 1,800 individuals would search 12 square miles of woods for a car bomb. Volunteers walked arm in arm through the tough, isolated terrain. Two different types of search dogs were brought in as well as scuba divers and a helicopter with heat sensing FLIR technology. Despite all the resources and manpower put into the search effort, no evidence of red was ever found, and this case joins many other hunters who have mysteriously vanished in the wilderness, and just like this case, no gun, clothing, or body is ever discovered. There's a whole lot of summer left, so next time you're itching to go outdoors, consider these poor folks who went out to do the same and never made it back. Always be prepared, use good communication, and expect the unexpected. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos. Every year, hundreds of people are reported missing in our state and national parks all over the country. While many of these folks are found, many others simply vanish without a trace. As these cases continue to pile on up, we can only hope to learn from them and be more prepared while venturing outdoors. Join me as I count down 10 more of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. Number 10 On March 31st of 2011, a 23-year-old named Adam Lyle Jones left his home in Florida and decided to head out west. He loaded up his car with some personal items for the trip and made several stops along the ways to his destination. At some point, he failed to check in with his parents and he was reported missing. Several months later on May 5th, a park ranger on patrol discovered an abandoned vehicle within the Grand Canyon National Park. Further investigation revealed that the car belonged to that of Adam, and it was not immediately known just how long the car had been there before rangers found it, but some sources state that it may have been there for well over a week. Inside the car, authorities found his laptop and an itinerary he made showing his planned trips, ranging from Colorado to California. A search of the park was conducted by rangers, volunteers, and dog teams, 
But after several days, and with no clue as to Adam's whereabouts, the search was suspended. To this day, no clues have turned up in Adam's disappearance. Number 9 On June 15th of 2016, a 66-year-old named Jack Thomas entered the Sawtooth Wilderness Recreation Area in Idaho for a day hike, but never returned. He was last seen by other hikers on the Queens River Trailhead. The trailhead's upstream and southbound along the edge of the South Fork Pyatt River between Fern Falls and Elk Lake, and less than a mile past Pitchfork Creek. After he failed to return home the following day on the 16th, his wife reported him missing, and crews began searching for him. Elmore and Boys County crews searched for Thomas for several days, bringing a search and rescue teams from several counties, eight from the Idaho National Guard and two private search companies. The search was called off on June 27th, and a private organization called the John Francis Foundation took over. However, these combined resources failed to turn up any clue as to Jack's whereabouts, and to this day, he remains missing. Number 8 On September 4th of 2008, a 77-year-old man vanished during his hike up the island of Oahu in Hawaii. Ron Parsons traveled to the island from Australia to visit some friends, and during his time there, he decided to take a solo day hike up Waimalu Trail on the southern end of the island, which is the fourth largest island in the Hawaiian Islands. The Waimalu Trail is stated as being more of a trail for pig hunters than it is for hikers and contains rough terrain, thick undergrowth, and several sharp drop-offs. At one point, Parsons encountered a pig hunter and his dogs, and the hunter told him to wait there while he chased after a pig. When he returned about 30 minutes later, Parsons was gone. It wasn't long before Parsons' friends reported him missing, and stated that he was only expected to be out there for about three hours. On the night that he was reported missing, Honolulu fire crews conducted an extensive search that lasted for about a week, but turned up no clues. Although the search was eventually called off, volunteers and family members continued to look for him for another two weeks until resources were exhausted. The search teams covered over 12 square miles and included aerial and marine searches as well. Half a year later in the spring of 2009, Parsons' dentures and pension card were found by pig hunters about two and a half miles from the trailhead. Other than that, no other evidence was found. Nearly ten years later, this case remains unsolved. Number 7 On September 19th of this year, a 19-year-old girl disappeared inside the Mount Rose area of Nevada. Madeline Lingenvelter was reported missing by her family after failing to check in that night and were able to ping her cell phone to the Tenenbaum Event Center near the base of Mount Rose, which is where investigators would eventually find her Toyota Prius. Upon further examination, there were no clues inside the vehicle to point them in any particular direction as to where she may have disappeared to. 69 volunteers, two dog teams, and a sheriff's helicopter have covered around 300 miles inside both the Tenenbaum Center and several hiking routes inside the Mount Rose area. After failing to find a single clue, the search was suspended four days later on September 24th. The day she went missing, 
A manager who works at the center mentioned that he saw a woman sitting in the car, which would later be confirmed as belonging to the Madelines. And when he returned later, he saw that the car was still there, but she wasn't inside. There are no further details about this case. Number 6 On November 4th of this year, a 59-year-old hunter was reported missing by members of his deer hunting party in northern Minnesota. The group had been hunting about 120 miles north of St. Paul near the Wisconsin border when David Pelter fell to return to the party's cabin. The group was specifically hunting in the Namaji State Forest along the Gandhi Dancer Trail near Belden. The following day, a multi-agency search and rescue effort, which included over a hundred volunteers, searched the area and failed to locate any clues. By the second and third days, the search expanded their zone and more personnel and volunteers joined in. By this point, several dog teams, ATVs, horseback rangers and aerial searchers were utilized and yet nothing was found. On the morning of November 9th, the sheriff's office announced that they were halting the unsuccessful search, though they would follow up on any new leads. The Namaji State Forest totals nearly 92,000 acres in both Pine and Carlton counties. As of November 12, 2018, David remains missing. Number 5 On October 4th of this year, a 30-year-old went missing in South Rocky Mountains National Park in Colorado. Ryan Albert was last seen by other climbers during a summit to Long's Peak in the northern region of the park. His planned route wasn't immediately known to search crews, but information received later revealed that he intended to climb Long's Peak via the Keyhole Route, which is one of the more popular routes to the peak. Rocky Mountain National Park search and rescue crews assisted by other agencies kicked off their search on the night he went missing, but by the following day, a huge storm moved into the area and complicated search efforts. The search included the use of expert climbers, dog teams, and the examination of aerial footage taken from a helicopter. As the days went on, the storm grew more powerful and by the fourth day of the search, there was waste and chest-deep snow, icy slopes, and impossible search conditions. After a week, operations were forced to shut down until conditions improved again. In the absence of any clues to Ryan's whereabouts, combined with the extreme winter weather, the search would end altogether. Long's Peak reaches 14,259 feet above sea level, and attracts thousands of climbers every year. Number 4 On August 4th of this year, a 33-year-old Denver man named Tyler Gorell went missing in a remote hiking area near Silverthorne, also in Colorado. Tyler was reported missing by family members after you failed to check in with them. I was unable to find any information as to what Tyler's specific plans were, but many speculate he was out for a solo day hike. Search and rescue were notified of Tyler's disappearance a short time later, and his vehicle had been located at the Winter Trailhead on Rock Creek Road. Seventy-two personnel arrived in the area, and provided 510 man-hours, while 11 dog teams provided a combined 67 hours, along with two days of flights by the Civil Air Patrol. 
Despite these efforts and the efforts of volunteers handing out flyers asking for information about Tyler's disappearance, the rescue group reported that it had not been able to find any clues. With a complete lack of evidence and no indication from the general public that he had been seen on any of the surrounding trails, the search was suspended after two weeks. Quote, Although we have suspended the act of search for Tyler, the Summit County Sheriff's Office has detectives assigned to the case who will continue to work closely with the Denver Police Department to find him. End quote. Stated by Sheriff Jamie Fitzsimmons. Number 3 On July 28th of 2016, a 71-year-old woman named Rosalind Saxonmeyer went missing during a solo hike to Lake Alpine in the Bear Valley area of California. Rosalind was camping with her family at the Silver Valley Campground near Lake Alpine and decided to go for a short walk around 2 p.m. that first day. It was stated that she had some health issues but was in good health at the time of her disappearance. On top of that, she was familiar with the local area, having visited several times previous. An extensive search and rescue operation kicked off after she failed to return to the campsite a short time later. Efforts peaked three days into the search with around 250 search and rescue personnel and involving 27 different agencies. Both searchers and family were baffled when the large search failed to locate any sign of her. Authorities state that the decision was made to call off the search after several days. According to search and rescue coordinator Mr. Case, quote, it was the most impressive search I have ever been involved in. It was just a huge operation. In total, Mr. Case said the operation employed a ground team, dive teams, sonar equipment via boats to search the water, at least three helicopters, hundreds of volunteers, and at night, an aircraft with thermal imaging would scan the area. Veteran Sheriff Officer Rick Stevens of the Alpine County Sheriff's Office personally hiked 120 miles during the search. Number 2 In July of this year, 51-year-old Paul Miller and his wife, Stephanie, left their home in Ontario, Canada and went on vacation, stopping at several locations in California and Nevada to celebrate their 26th anniversary and to enjoy the outdoors. On July 13th, the two got a hotel at 29 Palms and spent the time together enjoying the local hiking scene. On the final day of their three-day stay, Paul decided to go on one more short hike in the hope of photographing some bighorn sheep in the area. He left the hotel alone at around 9 a.m. and drove to the 49 Palms Oasis Trail in Joshua Tree National Park and promised to be back later that morning. His wife was originally going to accompany him, but with the time constraints pressuring them on the morning of their last day, she decided to stay back at the hotel and pack up. When Paul hadn't returned by 11 a.m., his wife grew concerned, but later decided to give him until noon. But as noon came and went, she called park officials who began a search by 1 p.m. Soon thereafter, Paul's rental car was found at the 49 Palms Oasis trailhead. His cell phone was left behind at the motel, but apparently this was not unusual for him. According to the National Park Service, the 49 Palms Oasis Trail offers a three-mile round-trip hike and requires two to three hours and is rated moderately strenuous, ascending about 300 feet each way. This well-maintained trail climbs to a ridge where large numbers of barrel cacti dot the landscape. After winding around the ridge to the top, the trail descends steeply to the oasis located in a rocky canyon. 
Towering palms create a canopy over clear pools of water. Large boulders provide a place to rest and enjoy the sights and sounds of the small ecosystem. George Land from the National Park Service stated that, quote, It is not a real difficult trail. You go in and come out the same way. However, it is a little bit of a rigorous trail, end quote. Despite an extensive search involving park officials, search and rescue personnel, 20 dog teams, volunteers, ATV searches, and aerial resources, no sign of Paul has been located. There were over 6,000 hours recorded during the search, and despite the unusually large number of canine teams, the dogs were unable to pick up a scent. The search was scaled back on July 18th and ended altogether a few days after that. As of November 2018, no clues to Paul's disappearance has come forward. Number 1 On September 2nd of this year, 20-year-old University of Wyoming student Kevin Rudnicki traveled out to Mount Herman in Colorado for a day's hike when he went missing. He was last seen wearing a green t-shirt, khaki cargo shorts, tan boots and a University of Wyoming baseball hat, and had a backpack containing water and snacks for the short trip. At around 8.45 in the morning of his hike, he ran into one of his former middle school teachers. The two of them chatted a while and went their separate ways. The teacher stated that Kevin was in good spirits and they had a nice time catching up. The area where they met was on Trail 715 in the Limbaugh Canyon area and from there, there's another trail that branches off and goes over to Forest Service Road 322. The next day on September 3rd, Kevin's mother reported him missing, and almost immediately, a large search effort was coordinating, involving hundreds of personnel. During the first week he was missing, dozens of search and rescue personnel kicked off the search focusing their efforts in both the Trail 715 and Service Road 322 areas. By the second week, many more would join the effort expanding their search zone outside of these areas. Dog teams, rangers, family members, and many volunteers would spend nearly a month searching for any sign of Kevin, but no clues were ever found. The greatest challenge for searchers was the vastness of the area with the widely varied terrain, authorities stated. Quote, there's a whole lot of established trails as well as a whole network of social trails and unmarked ones that go on forever, and it would be nearly impossible to cover these areas with limited resources and manpower, stated one of the searchers. Kevin is noted as an experienced hiker, having spent the past six or seven years hiking in Pike National Forest near Palm Lake and making his own trail maps. His mother also mentioned that he had been to Mount Hermon previously and knew the area well. And there you have it. Just 10 more of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. If you have any new information and updates on these cases, I'm sure we would all appreciate it if you shared it below in the comment section. As always, be safe out there, use good communication, carry protection, and travel in numbers. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos.